Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at the newest expansion to Goodman Games Dungeon Crawl Classics. This is a campaign setting based on the worlds of Jack Vance called The Dying Earth. Hello everybody, Jordan here at The PH is Silent. We're going to talk about this Kickstarter right here that I just got in the mail maybe two weeks ago. And I was able to kind of read through most of the material and we're going to talk about what's different with Dungeon Crawl Classics Dying Earth versus regular Dungeon Crawl Classics. And if this is worth your money, a uh, pro tip, it totally is. And I think if you like magic and wizards and uh, just spells in general, this is going to be a really good supplement for you. First of all, I want to talk about uh, just the books in general. Obviously, PDFs are easier to view. So for the most part of this, I'll adjust some of my cameras and we can do PDFs instead. Um, but remember to subscribe. Um, it came in two boxes and then a third with a whole bunch of adventures that I bought. And then I also got some Iron Stone dice. And if you want to watch like a big unboxing video, I did that um, on my main channel and I'll link it down below. It was just kind of a, a fun live stream to see what was in here. Um, but you're going to start out, we're going to get the player's uh, Librum, Librum, and then uh, Intimate Anatomy of Several Creatures and Personages of the 21st Aeon. So everything kind of has fun names like that, like Intimate Anatomy of blah, blah, blah. But the player's uh, section here is going to be how you create all of the characters for this. And it's going to be kind of bright and washed out, but that's okay. We got character creation. This is monsters and some extra spells and patrons and stuff. And then the rest of this book, and I'll just take them all out really quick. So this is the primal primer of practical magic. I think it was magic and how it works in the dying earth and a bunch of extra spells um, and just fun stuff in there. And then the casebook of arcane apocrypha. Um, and this has uh, expanded uh, witch spells, which kind of operate like cleric spells. Um, and then a whole bunch of like wizard towers and stuff that you can utilize kind of like, oh, you discover this over the hill. And here's like a little one shot adventure of something you discovered over the hill. And I really like that. Um, and a bunch of other fun stuff. So in short, the box and all the materials really put together. Um, I, I wish that it was a s one solid book, but I think Goodman Games just really enjoys the idea of the box set. And you do get the ability of like, oh, I can hand this to you and I can hand this to you. Uh, there's something for me that I really like having a one book uh, tome of it. And it's interesting that every time they come out with a box set, I always think about the original um, Dungeon Crawl Classics book and it's just this huge tome and how that would benefit from being a box set if I could have like the monsters over here and the thief rules over here kind of a thing. So there are some new classes and stuff. We're gonna dive in onto the PDF so you guys can see a little bit easier. So real quick, this is not sponsored in any way. I just really enjoyed Dungeon Crawl Classics and I'm gonna make some videos on it. But I wanted to let you know that as of April, uh, the beginning of April here, 2023, that we you can buy the box set from Goodman Games website. I don't know if it's on Drive Through RPG yet, but I bet it will be a, a, at some point. But you can buy um, PDFs from their website or you can get the box set and the PDFs. And so the box set comes with, um, it looks like it's one box instead of the two I have because I think a lot of those were Kickstarter bundles that are a Kickstarter extras that got kickstarted. Um, but it says here that you get uh, the player's Librum, a uh, primer of practical magic and intimate anatomy of several creatures and personages of the 21st Aeon um, and the Dying Earth map. They also have the Iron Stone dice, which I picked up because I thought was just fun. And they're just a set of DCC dice that are in different colors. But they also have um, a Iron Stone magic item on the inside paper, which is kind of fun that you could use in your game for your magician or wizard. And then they wrote eight, no, eight plus zero. So nine different adventures for Dying Earth. And maybe there will be more to come, but this makes a lot of sense because it was kind of like how the uh, Lankmar box set, that's kind of what I'm judging this off of because that's the last one I'm familiar with. But Lankmar came out and they not only had the box set and a few adventures, and then they, they wrote more adventures as it went along, kind of depending on the popularity that really fit in that world. 
and this is similar. So we have our uh, funnel, a level zero adventure, and then they came out with a level one adventure. Uh, we have number two, which is a level two. Uh, this is a level three, um, level four, <laughs> level five, level, oh, another level two adventure and a level three adventure and a level three adventure. Um, so lots of, lots of fun adventures. So right away, I think you could do the funnel and then boom, adventure, boom, boom, boom. And that is well worth the price. Um, I'll probably do some reviews on more of these as I read them. Um, my hope is to run them because I'm really enjoying Dungeon Crawl Classics. And as I have complete, completing Peril on the Purple Planet with my DCC group, I think the next step is I want to introduce Dying Earth and say, you want to start again from scratch and we'll just, we'll Dying Earth our way to victory. So here is the Dying Earth map. Uh, I just love maps and this is really beautiful and it's got lots of fun artwork um i don't know if every piece on here is a is a location that you're that people could go to but like it would be it's just fun and evocative um and i i think we could start somewhere you know like it's really interesting um again the lankmar i'm going to keep comparing this to lankmar but the lankmar map um, is just a big city because that's what Lankmar was. But like every little detail in there, you could go to all of those different places in Lankmar and there was always something to do. This is a lot more travel kind of epic fantasy. Uh, not that Lankmar wasn't, but you're not tied to a city. You're tied to the, the whole world or the universe in that way. So if you're a player, what what makes this different than just regular Dungeon Crawl Classics? And I think the the biggest part is... If you've read Jack Vance, you will notice all of the little, well, I should say if you've read the Dying Earth series, you will notice little things here and there about certain wizards being named and the the overabundance of words to describe stuff. Um, I didn't ever get around to reading Lankmar. I think I started it and I just, it didn't click with me as much, but when they announced that they were making this, I started reading the Dying Earth and I couldn't put it down. And it's really fun and interesting older sci-fi, uh, sci-fi fantasy, I guess I should say, because there it's an alien world where the sun is red and is going to burn out one day and the entire earth is going to die. You're in this like random age where so much magical mishap and mutation has happened that people are literally just waiting to die. Um, and with that, you have uh, adventures, Characters are very cutthroat and in it for themselves, and wizards are very empowered and arrogant. While reading it, I never really knew what was going to be on the other side of the page. Like it, it's always like, what's on what's on the other side of that ocean? And it's not nothing I was ever expecting. And I think that's the fun of the Dying Earth, or at least for me. So with the DCC Dying Earth, and we're going to go through uh, the setting. It kind of tells you a little bit more if you're interested at, if you haven't read D Jack Vance uh, Dying Earth, I think this is a great introduction. But it's basically like, it might be our Earth, we don't really know. But there is so many later eons in the world that magic has um, risen and fallen. And uh, anyway, it'll tell you all of the different eons of uh, the, of noteworthy historic events. But even then, history has been lost, and it could go back even further than that. And we don't really know, nor do we know what each of these aeons really brought to the table. Like this is all, you know, uh, history is written by the victors, so to speak. And so a lot of it, and a lot of it is maybe hearsay and we didn't truly understand. So is it technology? Is it magic? Is it a mix of both? Is the dying earth Numenera? Possibly, maybe in a way, who knows? <laughs> Now with character creation, we're gonna follow pretty much the same rules. Um, you're gonna have a determined starting animus, which is on page 17. Um, and if you're a VAT thing, you're going to have a, a pattern and a starting flaw, potentially. Our occupations table is an occupations table listed for Dungeon Crawl or Dying Earth, but you'll notice that a lot, a lot of them make sense anywhere. But Huntsman, uh, Herbalist, Glassblower, Gardener, but you're not going to see any elves. You're not going to see um, dwarves and things like that. Dying Earth is very much Earth with humans, um, except you are going to see a new species called Vatborn 
or that thing, I should say. And you'll see here down in the 79 to uh, 92 area, you'll be a VAT thing cast off or a VAT thing foundling and what have you. So the Animus is a part of your background um, that is influenced by luck. Um, and you can, you'll roll randomly on this. And then, um, on all of these tables, we have like, uh, I don't know, tactless buffoon, a village seeks retribution after the PC thoughtlessly mocked one of their most beloved citizens with a slight of magic to cause a mouth to form on the citizen's forehead <laughs> and re revile the crowd much to the denizens discom discomfiture. The player or judge may select a specific village where the implication imp imprecation took place where the PC will be recognized and apprehended on site. So it's a way for them to kind of sit into the, the world. And it says uh, earlier, each starting animus carries a specific malediction that can be used by the judge when they consider that the character has encountered a situation or traveled to a location where the animus may play a role. When such a situation arises, the character makes a DC 10 luck check, and when with a failure, the Animus has some unforeseen and usually uh, deleterious effect. Players should roll 1d30 on this to get a specific thing within the game. And this fits your character into the game a little bit better for long-term play, um, and it's also very Dying Earth-esque because there are characters who have wronged villages and just been like, well, guess I'll leave, and they head out of town. If they ever come back, they will be recognized. Um, and over on the right of the screen here are the VAT things starting traits. So in the first couple stories of the Dying Earth, VAT things are magicians are creating uh, life. They have these, these VATs that they have with primordial goo, and they're using it to literally create uh, a humanoid figure. They're not necessarily human, and that's why they're called VAT things. You can be a magician, and with this, I will go into the specifics of every class, probably in a more detailed video later on. But you should know that the classes in uh, the core book of Dungeon Crawl Classics can be used here. You may not want to use an elf, or if you do, it even says, like, if you're going to use an elf or a dwarf, have them be from somewhere else, or maybe they were augmented in some way um, to look like this. Uh, but they, they aren't necessarily an elf because those don't necessarily exist in the Dying Earth, but it's 100% compatible with the core game and you can mix and match all of these if you really, really wanted to. Magicians use magic that is uh, rote magic, very uh, that is memorized and put into their heads and then they cast it knowing exactly what it can do, which is very uh, much the antithesis of a Dungeon Crawl Classics wizard where you cast a spell and you're not really sure what's going to happen. Wayfarer is the next one, and a Wayfarer, to me, feels a little bit like a thief, but has um, an interesting luck mechanic to kind of reflect some of the odd luck that can happen in the game. So instead of spending luck to succeed, you have this give and take extremes of really good luck and really bad luck. So I just wanted to point out this artwork I think is amazing and I really love it. This is the introduction to the witch. And the witch is more of a offensive cleric, if that makes sense. Um, and a lot of cleric magic can be used with the witch. So I think if you have, this is the class that I feel most uh, benefits regular DCC and kind of incorporating this. So it's like, I'm not necessarily a cleric, but I've made a pact with something and I get weird magical powers from that entity. And then we get into uh, weapons and ammunition and armor, um, various things of equipment that uh, you'll find in the Dying Earth. And then we'll also go into Overland Speed, which is if you're going to make this a campaign, I think this is really useful and awesome. And so uh, having a raft or a fishing boat, you kind of know like daily distance, I can get about 10 miles. And then next I wanted to talk, to, talk about the Primer of Practical Magic. So this is uh, explains magic more in detail and how it works and what is fancy in magic. Um, I kind of wish this was bundled next to the magician because I got a little confused reading it of like, well, how does the magician work and things like that? But there's there's still spell burn if you're a wizard, but if you're not a wizard, there is uh, something else. Um, and it's not necessarily mercurial magic. This one, if you're a magician, um, you're going to have spell provenance. Um, and then there's also wizardly objurgation. <laughs> 
And wizardly objurgation is when you make a fumble. This is your fumble table for um, the dying earth. Mazes, which are magician homes um, that have... Uh, this has a cost in how to create one because it's kind of like magicians will eventually want to carve out their little kingdom. Um, spell creation and spell modification. And magicians' abilities, limitations, and powers. So this really goes into more depth about how the magicians work um, and s spells and stuff that you'll get at the very first. Talk about sendestins, which is how magic is is viewed in the dying earth. And sendestins are are like uh, creatures made of magic in a way. And when you learn a spell, like a spell is a living thing that you learn and it sits in your head and then you release it in order for the spell to take effect. And then witch packs, squalms, and demonic corruption, because witches are making packs with these otherworldly creatures. Uh, and they have something called squalms, which is their, their spells more or less, but they also have like curses and they can curse other people. Yeah, squalms and curses. And then here's how you can incorporate clerics in the dying earth. It says like the the gods are long dead for for so to speak, but if you want to incorporate them, it could be fun to have um just the power of faith in the cleric could really work. And so I like that they we have a list of gods that you can use. Um and I enjoy that it has the disapproval effect uh and that you could pursue this route in the DCC dying earth. And last is the intimate anatomy of several creatures and personages of the 21st Aeon. This is your monster manual and your patrons, like, and spells of invoke patron and what have you. So patrons of the dying earth and ascertained lands of the dying earth, talismans, amulets, uh, like ma uh, magic items and how to craft magic items, and then uh, monsters and mundane, the men and peoples of the dying earth, unusual inhabitants of the dying earth. We have Pandaloom as a magician uh, patron. And if you are a vat thing, having a powerful magician be your patron, it kind of makes sense. And here are some lands uh, that will give you more information on the topo topography. Um, and this is the map, obviously, of the Dying Earth. And then talismans, amulets, and instruments of both minor and major power. Um, these are magical items, but also tools to create magical items for you. And then monsters. We need some monsters. But again, with Dungeon Call Classics, a lot of the monsters come in via the adventures. And so when you run a lot of these adventures, um, they're going to have the monsters built into it. And if you kickstarted Dungeon Denizens for DCC, then you have 500 DCC monsters that you can also incorporate into the Dying Earth. Dungeon Girl Classics, The Dying Earth, I totally recommend this. Um, stay tuned to the channel as I'll be releasing more videos. They'll probably be linked down below if you're interested in that. Um, and also links to go pick this up if you think it's interesting. If you're running a DCC Dying Earth, is it is it everything you ever wanted? A couple people have told me this in the past that when they, they liked DCC, but when they actually started playing Lankmar, that's when the system hooked for them. And it was like, wow, I have a... I have a purpose, I have a setting, I love this. And so I think the new mechanics that are kind of introduced in this game could do that for you. And if you're a big nerd like me and like Wizards, I think this is an awesome pickup. So not sponsored, just love it. Doing a quick review. Thank you so much for being here and subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you in more Dungeon Crawl Classics Dying Earth videos. Take care.